Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be taking a look at the multi-mission capable survival kit slash survival knife. And today we're going to be digging into what this thing is and overall how I got it to work. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so I've teased this before in another little YouTube short and a lot of people wanted to know more about it and I was definitely aware that I was going to be showing it off, so that's not a huge deal. So today we're going to be taking a look at the, what I like to call, multi-mission capable survival knife or survival kit, whatever you'd like to call it. So this is overall what it is, and as far as the knife goes, this is built off the back of a SE6, and I think the SE6 is a great choice. It's a very capable knife. Once again, this is a kind of survival kit, survival knife that is designed to fit as many needs and as many roles as humanly possible, and uh, I think the SE6 is a pretty good or pretty venerable option for that. Not to mention, not only does the knife have to be good, but you also have to be able to attach the sheath. So so before we dig into too much more, I'll, I'm going to discuss how I got this all to work out. So for those who don't know, this overall core of the pack is a Maxpedition Janus. It is actually just my personal survival kit that I kind of reconfigured for this video to show off more options. And also I wanted to run this setup because I thought it would be pretty cool and pretty fun. So what I did was I essentially just took a couple pieces of paracord, uh, two separate strands. So there's this one running this way, this one running this way, and I strung them to the molly attachments on the back of this. Janus. So that's how I got the sheath onto the uh, actual survival kit itself. Now this obviously is quite a heavy survival kit. Um, it's not super heavy but it definitely has some weight and most importantly it has some bulk to it. And so the thing that you I had to do to really make sure that when this was on your belt, preferably on the small of your back and not go anywhere, was make sure that it had some really good clasps. So I have some of these belt loops. Um, I got them with another knife long ago and that knife I use as a neck knife. So I have these belt loops kind of just sitting around. So what I did was I used the standard um, belt loop attachments down here on these two uh, kind of eyelets uh, for the sheath and then I punched a few holes up here in this rubber to add a couple more holes right there. So those essentially screwed in there and they gave this um, to give these belt loops a little bit more rigidity and make this a little bit stronger connection to the actual uh, bulky survival kit. I just added an additional couple bolts there that bolted uh, this belt loop onto so anyways, that is the sheath. That's how it's rigged up. Now, the personal survival kit. Now, this is probably what people are not going to want to hear, but I did a comprehensive video going over everything in the survival kit. I did a comprehensive uh, video going over everything in this survival kit from the personal locator beacon to the kit in here and to all the various contents in here. So I will go over briefly. This is a personal locator beacon from ACR. That's what's attached to the bottom. And of course I have it rigged up with just some simple, uh, some simple rigging with paracord to pull it and it'll come reasonably free. And then you, know, you pull it off of the sheath and you can use it. This right here is the ferrocerium rod that is located on the inside for striking off of a knife or off of anything to start fires. And then I have a basic medical kit in here. I also have a lot of different survival uh, stuff in here from mylar blankets to emergency food to emergency fire starters, different matches, lighters, like I said, the ferro rod, whole bunch of survival goodies are on the inside of this little Maxpedition Janus. It is rather jammed, and the reason why I'm not opening it up is it's a pain in the butt to open up, go through, and put back together. So if you wanna see the whole uh, inside of this thing, I will have a link in the description below and probably a card somewhere around here to show or to link to that video where I break down everything that is in this personal survival kit. So in this video, like I said, I won't be covering that part, but I wanted to go over the, I wanted to go over the bits that I could and to show you guys what this multi-mission capable 
uh, setup looked like because there was interest and because I wanted to show you guys, just give you guys an option for a really practical, really reasonably easy to carry survival setup. And that's the biggest thing uh, when it comes to carrying real survival equipment. It should be practical, field usable, and reasonably easy to carry. And so from this setup, that is just that. You can throw this on the back you can throw this on your belt. I prefer to carry this on the small of my back so that it's sitting essentially like this and I can come around with my right hand essentially like this, pull the blade out and have it in hand to use. It's not the easiest system to resheath, but it's also not the hardest either. So you kind of have to uh, take some exceptions where you can, you know, it's not gonna be the greatest system or the greatest setup, but uh, it checks a lot of boxes off and, it gives you a fantastic survival kit and also a fantastic survival knife to pair with it. Now, I would still always and of course recommend that you carry something like a hatchet or an axe and a saw. I don't think the knife is the, you know, one solution to every problem, but having a really solid survival knife is the solution to a lot of problems. So hopefully you enjoy looking at this multi-mission capable kind of survival knife or survival kit, however you'd like to call it, but that is the setup and that's what it looks like in depth. As always, God bless and I'm out.